Hi guys, this is John Callum from KHL Motorsport. This is a short, well I don't know how long this will be, but this will be an update. Um, and also as of this uh, shooting, um, we're running out of days in the calendar. And of course we're doing this video to improve on our last video which, which was just a clip show admittedly. So hopefully this would satisfy those of the people who want a more immersive content, so to speak. So uh, here goes. So as far as the engine bay is concerned, the wires, the, the wiring harness has been laid. Um, we still have to get the car started. Uh, it has already cranked. As you can see, there's a battery here already. Um, you could see mass airflow sensor uh, mounted here. Maybe you guys can help me because this is the mass airflow sensor provided to me by the seller, the engine. It says 501. Um, I don't think this is the correct mass airflow sensor for this car. So if you guys could give me a heads up if this is something I could still use or should I look for the proper mass airflow. Uh, let me know in the comments See the engine is mounted really close to the frame rail And we had to fabricate a new bracket for the stock Hyundai Tiburon uh, engine support which matches up pretty nicely to the 4G63 well two of the three holes up actually so I had to remove the other stud and I think it should be uh, rigid enough uh, to handle the weight and the forces of this engine. Well, I sure hope so. You can see that uh, we figured out a solution for the radiator. So the standard radiator is mounted um, at the back of the radiator support and the condenser was located here in this location. Where this radiator is now which is underneath the radiator support but since there's a lot of well there is a lot of real estate now but at least we'd be very confident that we could fit decent size radiator fans here at the back so we're very happy with this location and this is a custom radiator made out of copper um, I don't know anyone in the Philippines that makes custom aluminum radiators I mean full aluminum ones we even with aluminum uh, end tanks so but to make a custom uh, copper radiator is relatively easy so I had it done at Sammy's here in Paranaque and uh, I think they did a good job also, I don't know, it's hard to see in this light, but this is the EVO 4 stock oil cooler. So we mounted it here, uh, close to where uh, the fog lights on the right side would be. So we're gonna remove the fog light on this side in order for the oil cooler to get air. I'm not really happy with this size, I wanted a bigger oil cooler. But since this is the stock EVO 4 oil cooler, this should suffice for now. And maybe in the future, I just add another one to complement this one. Um, this propeller shaft is a shortened one from uh, Mitsubishi RVR. I forgot what year model, probably an early 90s RVR. We had to shorten this about 3 inches. And then that made me realize something. If we were converting an Elantra J2 chassis uh, instead of an RD Tiburon to four-wheel drive, technically speaking, we should have not had to shorten the propeller because the difference in wheelbase between the this Elantra wagon and sedan, they're basically having the same wheelbase as compared to this one which has a three-inch shorter wheelbase. So we had to had have this shortened and we have yet to fit it so we're going to be finalizing 
on the propeller shaft assembly and it and the bracketing of the uh, center bearing this is basically a few steps away for this car to be legitimately four-wheel drive this is the stock wheel for the Hyundai Coupe I really like these wheels these wheels are 15 by 6 offset 46 4 holes 114 because that's the standard bolt pattern of the Hyundai Coupe we have converted the brakes to 5 by 114 so the stock wheels do not fit at all so we found a nice analog to these wheels so we have purchased these so these are wheels from the 2012 up Hyundai Elantra so as you can see they're also uh, they have directional spokes uh, which is something I loved about the coupe wheels and it, apparently the base model Elantra sold in the Philippines came with these wheels. These are also 15 by 6. Uh, I think it, it's also an offset 46 if I'm not mistaken. And most importantly, it's 5 by 114. We've already tried mounting these wheels on the brakes and we kind of have to grind the calipers of the Evo 4 so that they these wheels fit nicely. I'm sure this car will look relatively stock which is what we kind of want to do uh, for, for the overall appearance of this car to be semi stock looking we're putting 1956015s these are old uh, this is an old tire that I just had laying around so I just had it fitted just for mock-up purposes uh, I think it's a waste of money to buy new tires at this point so uh, just for mock-up, just for rolling the car around, we're gonna just rely on um, these old tires. Okay, I'm just basically using the torch of my other cell phone here to, for you to see what's going on. Um, this is the rudiments of the fuel system of the car. So, uh, like we said in previous installments, we are using a Subaru gas tank. Yeah, basically, it's mounted pretty high. This is higher than the stock tank location. So it's bad for, this setup is kind of bad for center of gravity. But uh, since this is our only tank that would work, we're kind of stuck with this. And don't tell me to buy a fuel cell because that costs money and a lot of money. Trying to do this on the cheap, of course, in a nice way, but... Uh, cheap yeah this is the stock uh, fuel pump assembly for a Subaru Legacy BG5 that will pump fuel to the surge tank uh, this is another part that we just had lying around so it was waiting for years to find something that I could use this surge tank for so finally with this project uh, we're using this uh, interesting handmade uh, part so the surge tank is supposed to feed to this external fuel pump is basically uh, a copy of the Bosch uh, high pressure high volume external pump so we'll see how long that will last this is supposed to be rated at 300 liters per hour um, and should give us enough flow for future mods to the Evo 4 engine. And then we are creating a new set of pipes, uh, the fuel filler to get to the gas tank. So we're gonna lay it over here. So we're gonna enclose the whole uh, fuel assembly with a false floor, a flooring of steel perhaps, or aluminum, depending on budget. And actually, I'm not pretty happy with the fuel pump location, so I'll probably have the pump moved elsewhere. We'll see what can be done with that. But for now, this is the fuel setup for the car. Alright guys, that's basically it for now. And um, we'll keep you updated on the next uh, status updates of this car over there. 
I want to get it running as fast as possible but it will take a bit of time regardless I hope you guys have a pleasant holiday season ahead of us and I hope you guys continue to keep safe please don't forget to like and subscribe if this is content that you like watching alright guys take care God bless